everyone. Welcome to the Fountain Centre podcast number two. Today's podcast will be led by Eileen Goldsack, who is the Cancer Support Service Lead at the Fountain Centre and also a trained coach. She will be joined by Amanda White, who is a volunteer coach at the Fountain Centre and has been for the past five years. Amanda is also the owner and director of Confluence Coaching. Today's topic is reframing negative thoughts. Thank you, Maria. And hi, Amanda. What, you know, at the moment, as you say, we see a lot of um, anxiety and fear around and how reframing can help us in those um, circumstances. I guess a good place to start might be, what does it mean to reframe? Right. I think in coaching terms, reframing means when we try to take a different perspective to a problem. So for example, if we're feeling really fearful about something, that can get us into a bit of a downward spiral where that panic can take hold in our brain. And technically what's happening in your brain then is that your amygdala is taken up with that fight or flight response, which is a double problem because on the one hand, your your body is producing cortisol, stress hormone, and getting more fearful and deciding whether to fight or run away, basically. Um, If you can't run away because maybe your fear is something you're stuck with, perhaps you're stuck in your house shielding when everybody else is beginning to go out or something like that, Um, you you, you end up stuck where the fear is growing. And that while while your brain is preoccupied with that, it's not using the parts of the brain that help with rational problem solving and more positive thinking. So the trick with reframing is to try to find a way that's authentic for the person concerned to think more positively. So if they notice themselves going into this downward spiral of fear and anxiety, to notice that happening, which is, a you know, not everybody can do that, it is true. But if you can notice it's happening, and then bring something to mind, which might be more positive, like, okay, I know this is challenging, but I know I'm strong, I know I'm resilient, and I know I can get through this. So that's the kind of thing, it's sort of turning, noticing the negative spiral beginning to happen, noticing that fearfulness coming up, and thinking, right, let's just reframe, let's think, okay, I'm struggling, it's difficult, but there's something to look forward to or you know when I get through this I'm going to be stronger or you know I am going to get through it because I know I'm basically resilient and it's it those messages are different for different people sometimes it can be you know something to look forward to um you know when I get through this I'm I'm going to have a party (laughs) or something um or you know um I'm going to get in touch with some friends to talk about my anxieties and and share the problem whatever it might be but it's sort of reframing it into something more positive something to look forward to is that some way of, of convincing yourself that you are resilient and you will get through it so it's, it's kind of finding a way that works for you to work mm. with these negative thoughts because they're coming from a place of fear yes and actually they're all very understandable and we all yeah. manage them very very differently so just finding a way in somehow mm. having that moment of pause Mm. to somehow give yourself that breathing space as you say that gives you different perspectives straight away Mm. and then that allows you to look at it just from a different angle um, or find some way of dealing with it that's 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 going to help you yes that's right and actually it's interesting you mentioned breathing space because that's something that I tend to uh, you know encourage people is is to just breathe and to become to notice their emotions which as you say all the anxieties and things that people have at the moment particularly people who might be shielding especially when they see other people in their family maybe starting to go out and about and return to normal life and they can't and it's very difficult um, to notice those emotions and think okay that's normal it's fine you know acknowledge it and then take a deep breath and sort of reset Think, yeah. but I know I'm strong, I know I can get through this. Or maybe what I try to encourage people is to think of, you know, how, what, what else have they come through in their life? You know, when have they been strong before? Maybe they've already come through a lot in terms of their treatment. 
or other things that have happened during their life. So sometimes it can be reminding themselves that they've been through more challenging situations in the past um, and they've come out the other side stronger. Yeah, I like the, the reminder of your resilience because we forget that when we're in crisis and yeah. that's a really powerful thing to, yeah. to, to enable people to sort of get on stock because it is a stock moment in our lives and we're all human and um, I think we're hardwired to to have that because that's and I guess um sometimes um we need that and that serves us and other times it doesn't and I guess coming back to that pause that a moment of awareness if we drop into that and just assess what's going on we can say to ourselves, okay, in this now, for now, this isn't helping me. This thought, because a lot of it's, um, would you agree, Amanda, that a lot of it is, is habitual brain. It's, 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 the, it's the neural pathways that we've always gone down and we go down that rabbit hole and we're there. And if we can just, before we leap to that stage, stop um, and have that dialogue with ourselves almost and just think, what part of me is in control here? And is that the part that's going to get me through this? So it's yeah. like, as you say, it's got to be authentic. It's got to suit the person. But everyone can find their way of managing that. It's, to me, I call it like the inner critic, the voice in us that kind of has that thing when we're trying to sort stuff out. Um, just being able to accept that that's what's happening and be that aware of it. And maybe somehow, as you say, just shift that dog. It might just be one word or one action that can somehow um, allow us to be more creative and problem solve and, and sort of move rather than be caught in that moment. On the other side of that is our kind and compassionate voice. Do we, act, do we try and allow that to come through and, and work on allowing the kindness and the it's okay and um, we sometimes just block that so much when we're in that moment, when we're in fight and flight, as you said, we've lost that moment to sort of be our compassionate selves to ourselves. Um, and we, we talk to ourselves in a way that we wouldn't dream Ever. of talking to somebody else. So that is something I find, you know, if you can just stop, take a breath. And as you say, Eileen, say, is this serving me? Is this, is this doing me any good, this panic that I can feel, feel building up, or is it not? And yeah. what would I say to my best friend if they were feeling Absolutely. like this? What would, what would I, you know, you, you wouldn't turn around to your best friend and say, you know, you're useless, you'll never get out of this, you're yeah, stuck you're in the just, house forever, you know, yeah. panic away. You would say, now oh, come on, let's think about times when you've been really resilient in the past, or, you know, you know, that you're a courageous person, you've been through a lot, you're very strong. And for some people it can, as you say, just be a few words, like a little phrase that can just bring people up. Yeah. So I had one, one coaching client, for instance, who, who had actually written on their desk, um, that, you know, I am resilient and strong, and that's what they needed. to just remind themselves on a little picture of something. I think it was a picture of a sun, sunbeams. And that's what, for them, worked. Now, that wouldn't work for everybody. Um, it's everybody needs their own way of getting through it. Um, for some people, it's enough just to take a breath and say, hang on, I'm, going, I'm doing it again. That inner critic is shouting at me and I need to be kind to myself because it's normal to feel like this. Yeah. And I can do it. I can get out of it. I'm going to go and do something more, you know, that will help me focus on something different. Yeah. Um, but other people, it's, it's a phrase or, you know, it, it can be, it can be something different for everybody. And, and in, as a coach, we need to try and help people find what it is for them because it's no good saying, well, you need a phrase if, it, if, if they're not a That's word. Not. Sometimes you need an image. Sometimes right. you need a, an inspirational a photograph of somewhere where you felt really calm. Or, or a heart, yeah, or like an emotion, a heartfelt an emotion, emotion. A heart, a rainbow nowadays, or, you know, whatever. But something, yeah. whatever does it for you that yeah. can just help you take catch yourself and think hang on now I'm just going to breathe and think about you know a sunny day in the future when we've returned to a bit more normal life and I'm feeling better about this because I know I can get to that point and it's isn't it isn't it it's work though because I think we need to we need to actually actively 
one be aware and then decide how we're going to work with it ourselves individually so mm-hmm. that we can be the be- so that we can be our best self because also what happens is when we start down that negative route, it just grows. And before we know it, it, we've catastrophized perhaps. It's much bigger than it ever was. Mm -hmm. And and also we're projecting that out. So then we start getting it back. So there's just a vicious cycle. And somewhere we have the option and the power to break into it if, if if we choose to. And learning and trying different things. And it might not always work, but I think the more you do it, you are learning a new a new tool yes. and you will see its benefit and the more you see the benefit the more you use it the more you'll grow and the more that neural pathway is a really viable option the first thing is to actually notice it's happening you know because it's very easy to get swept down into that spiral of despondency um, and it's noticing it's happening is, is definitely easier said than done um, mm-hmm. Much so easier training said. your mind, training your mind to notice when you're becoming um, more than just a bit fed up, you know, and you're getting, you're maybe starting to catastrophize, imagine things that, you know, are never going to happen probably. Um, and it's that, that's just wind myself back up and think, hang on, take a breath. How can I, how can I look at this from a different perspective? Um, and sometimes discussing it with with your loved ones or you know close friends can help because they may see you in a totally different light you know we, we tend to be as you say our own worst critics so sometimes talking it over with a friend who says well I don't see you there's a fearful fright this isn't you you know you're you're, you're normally very positive you've helped me through difficult times in the past yeah. you know and you sort of see yourself in a different you know a different perspective um, that that can be helpful, but it's um, it, it's not an easy thing, and that's why you know sometimes coaching can help people get there to remind. So well, let's let's just have a look at these assumptions you're making that you're useless and that you you're frightened and you you it's never going to end. Let's just let's just look at that. How realistic is that? Because yeah, what and, that's doing is it's feeding into that self limiting belief. Yes, and therefore you're therefore you're not allowing yourself to be creative and to focus, no. you know, solutions and stuff. You're just you're you're limiting your your ability to to um, be creative and um, mm. move move where you want to go, move yes. where you want to go. So um, if, if, and and if, if even that awareness that I'm actually stuck here and I don't want to be here is is mm. is the first step, isn't it? Because Definitely. then you can start looking with a coach or whoever. Yeah. Um, how, how can I, you know, work with this to, to get to where I want to be, which is reaching your goal or whatever it might be. Knowing yeah. where you want to be as well, isn't it? And, and for some people, some people at that point, writing it all down is helpful or drawing it or listening to music, you know, lots of different ways of sort of putting people into a slightly different frame of mind, whatever works for the individual. For sure. But it's in a way, it's that having a purpose and knowing what, where do you want to be? You know, do you want to look forward to a holiday in six months' time when hopefully, you know, that's a possibility? Or do you want to create something and work towards, you know, producing something that will give you a feeling of satisfaction? Um, lots of diff- lots of different, more positive ways of, of moving, but it depends on the individual as to what suits them. It does, but it all, it does all come back to some level of um, conscious choice. Yes. A con- an awareness, a consciousness, and then a choice, and actually a responsibility, because maybe that's the one thing we kind of we haven't spoken about yet is the fact that we're all responsible for our thoughts and how they act out mm-hmm. in our lives. So if we if, if if that's not how we want to be, and um, we can we can we can take responsibility for that. But within us, we've got different parts, mm-hmm. and they're all playing a role. And when we go into this role, we've allowed one part of ourselves, which is our inner critic. That's how I feel has become mm-hmm. dominant. And at some level, we need to be the, the, the um, conductor of our orchestra. And we need everybody on board to help us through difficult times, particularly the times that our, our patients are. I mean, we're talking, they're big fears, aren't they? They're big mm-hmm. anxieties. So I guess the more in control we can be, the more centered we can be, the more we can pull in everything that makes us who we are to help us. And the more we think about ourselves as as a sum of different parts like that. Exactly, yeah, Uh, yeah, absolutely. You're on your, you know, your um, 
your fighting warrior part or your you know you, you can you can help people can think about the different aspects of their personality that they have and actually think i'm going into the victim at the moment that's right. I'm, going to draw is, yeah. on, I'm going to draw on a different part of my personality which is that sort of um you know logical go ahead more productive person of course once you make that switch in the brain you stop the fear part of the brain taking over and you start with the more productive rational um, solving rational and right. look at, well what can i do to me advise me yeah. advise the fearful part of me yeah. to move forward and, and that can yeah. be another good way of reframing i think that's a really good way because it gives us loads of uh, tools mm. in a sense because that inner critic is very important to us too Mm. We need that and we have yeah. to honour and acknowledge that there's a time when we need that. But there's times when we, we need to ask it to have a little sleep or just take it easy because actually we're going to, because they dominate. If one's very dominant, it means the one that's kind of opposite, which is our compassion self, has been squeezed out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the bigger one part of us gets, the smaller our sums get. That is the sum of us, which, as you say, are the bits that will, we need them all. Yeah. And it's picking the right one at the right time, isn't time. it? And then once you've That's right. switched into a more productive way of looking at something, then you can build on that. But it's yeah. making, it's noticing and then making that conscious effort. And as you say, to, that we are responsible mm -hmm. for our emotions. So do we like to be in this panic mode? Is that serving us in some way? Maybe it that is. Was, yeah. And sometimes it might, exactly. And it's just having the awareness to assess it. Mm. and that gives you that's giving you the pause the standing back and mm. the, the seeing the whole picture and and, and, yeah. and i suppose the other thing is not to beat yourself up and i think amanda probably mm. would agree with me and if if you're working on that bit for yourself and it's not going so well that's okay just just keep trying because yeah. you never you might go forward you might go back but if we give up all together then we, you know and there will be times you're not going to it's not going to come but you can reflect and you can do that positively as opposed to even if it doesn't work you can reflect in a positive way yes after an event and that in itself can help you kind of build up a different um way of thinking i think and showing yourself the compassion that you would show to your best friend exactly is that we're it, we're all and we can all be aware if that is where we if we want to be aware and it won't always be comfortable and we might not always like it but it, it it's kind of the starting point of of any growth in, in a sense yeah. and also not being afraid to ask for help absolutely that's a because, really good point you know because we are talking about yes it's we are responsible for our mood but we maybe all need a bit of help from time to time absolutely and asking yeah. for help doesn't mean you're giving giving away responsibility and it's a strong person who can ask for help and say i'm struggling with whatever it is um and you know, whether that help is, is professional help or just somebody to listen to you, um, give you a different perspective, that can be helpful. Because you're taking, I think in that you're taking real ownership yes. and that in itself is positive and empowering and it's not negative thinking. And also, I guess, if, if you're noticing that somebody else is in that fear mode, it's sometimes tempting to jump in and start telling them what to do, yeah. which doesn't always help, but help. You know, maybe... Quite often just saying, I've noticed that you're looking a bit down, you know, yeah. anything you want to talk about or... Yeah, allowing like, them an in. Would you like to go for a walk or shall we go and play a game of something together or, you know, anything that you think that might just lift that person slightly. Yeah. Um, but noticing it and just saying, I've noticed, you know, I'm here to listen. Um, it depends on them. Some people don't want yeah, to talk, yeah. but if you, if you can get them involved in an activity, they may open up yeah. and it's knowing the person well enough. But just, I think it can never do any harm to say, look, I'm noticing that you're looking really sad or whatever, anxious. Yeah. At least it shows them that you've, you've noticed and even if they don't choose to talk to you then, they may, they may another time. I mean, back home, Amanda, we would say, what's wrong with your face? That's maybe not, <laughs> that's maybe not the right... The right, the right. That's not very compassionate, is it? <laughs> but it probably works. But actually, but, but it actually, does. It would work back home because it, 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 it's, yeah. it's an honest um, conversation. What's wrong with you? Yeah. 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 So it's, yeah. That's, 
yes. some people it appreciate that. <laughs> yes, it's serving it's the kind same of, it's, a, it's like Amanda said, it depends on the relationship you have. You know, you can say that to some people, what's wrong with you? Because actually that's the way you talk. Yeah, as long as you're not turning around saying pull yourself together or together, something. Together, yeah. Like that. That's quite a slightly you know, different. It's just sort of anything in the right language for the person. You're offering support. And yes. as you say, it's up to them. They can find them the time and place or whatever if it suits. Yeah. But it's a good point. And we do recognize that in other people very quickly. And maybe we don't recognize it in ourselves often. So that's back to that mm -hmm. awareness, isn't it? So mm -hmm. sometimes it does take somebody because then you can almost think, yeah, I, I am. I, I am. There's something not, you know, I'm feeling this way. Um, so it can allow you that moment. It can give you a moment of pause and thought and, and process stuff as well. And we'd love to hear from anybody who's got any issues around anxiety or fear, anything, how, how you feel. Um, yeah, coaching can help them. Um, but we would, we would all listen, first of all, to the person's anxiety, fear, whatever. So all the coaches would provide a good non-judgmental listening board because whatever the anxieties are whatever the people are feeling it's valid and understandable and then we would we would choose how to take that forward in conjunction with the client depending on what they need and what they want to get out of the coaching session so it's always very led by the client but it does come down to trying to encourage people to be compassionate to themselves like they would be to anyone else so thank you very much Eileen Thank you. And special thanks to Amanda. No, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. You. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this topic, or indeed any suggestions for any further topics you would want us to cover in any future podcasts, please contact us via the details in the description. Our next podcast will be covering the topic of insomnia. So if you can stay awake long enough, please join us for that. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon.